What's your go-to excuse? Yeah, you can tell me. I'll, I'm listening. <laughs> you're tired. You're busy. I'm old. I think I heard that one. <laughs> my anxiety got me. I've got to work. I've used that one most of my life. I'm sure I've got some work to do. Too busy. Too busy. Oh, kids are the best excuse in the world, especially those of you who have little ones, right? Yeah, you give them a little bit of a, a like a, like, you know, you know how to make them cry. Oh, kids, we got to go. Time to go. Family gatherings. I don't know if I have any family here, but I used our kids all the time to escape from family gatherings. <laughs> kids are tired. They got, they've got to go to school. It wasn't the kids. It was me. I didn't want to be there. That's the truth, right? Oh, excuses. So the next four weeks, we are going to unpack excuses. And the more I dug into this message and, and the scriptures around it, the more I kept looking inside of me and realized that, boy, these are very limiting things, aren't they? I had a, a very close friend, a mentor. When I graduated from high school, she gave me a plaque, and that plaque said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And that probably saved me from a lot of excuse making and a lot of excuse implementing. Because I would look at that for wisdom sometimes and say, okay, I don't want to not jump in. But you know how easy it is to do that. The next 30 minutes have the potential to really change your life. Although some of you are going to have an excuse, yes, of why what I'm saying doesn't apply to you. You're that good. Some of you are excuse factories. I have the privilege of being bivocational, means I work in the secular world and I work in the church. I can't tell you how many excuses I feel why people don't want to change. Can't change my health because of dot, dot, dot. Can't change my spiritual habits because of dot, dot, dot. Goes on and on and on. But we all have these excuses, and they've been around for a really long time. Andy Standy says that they act like paper walls, like walls of paper that we can't get through, although they're flimsy. They're really not holding anything. There's no substance to them most of the time. It's really an internal thing. It's a you thing. The truth of, is, is that most of us are very, very slow to admit something, but we're very quick to justify something. Do you find that true in your life? I find it true in mine. We make these excuses, we build them, we create them throughout life. And then there's a time where our excuses turn into reasons. And you truly believe them. You truly believe them. And I do too. But there's that weird transition that when you say things long enough, your brain believes it. And it goes from being something, yeah, I, I, I'm probably too busy to do that, and then all of a sudden I'm too busy to, to pray for someone. I'm too busy to go to church. I'm too busy to, you fill in the blank. Excuses have been around for a very long time, though. And some of them are some some reasons that we talk about are legitimate. You can't dunk a basketball. Anyone in here dunk a basketball? I think the only person that could is in kids' zone. In your dreams. I don't know if that's an excuse or not. That's a real reason. You don't have what it takes, or you don't have what it takes anymore. There was a day that I could. I can't anymore. It's sloppy looking if I jump now. There's a reason for that. But those excuses often morph into reasons because we hide behind them. I'm too busy. I'm not qualified. I, it's not my thing. It's too much risk. That's one of mine. It's too risky. But we disguise our excuses as legitimate reasons, making it difficult to see the truth. Because the truth is, that the truth is, is that it's, it's an internal issue. 
that we've been running from. We use them to defend behaviors, reactions, and overreactions in life. Have you noticed that when someone tells you an excuse, you're right on it, you're like, that's an excuse. But when you say it, it's not always that way. I have a friend that keeps asking me to do something, and legitimately, I want to do it with him. It's way out of my comfort zone. But I keep responding because I'm, I am busy. And, it, and I, as I'm typing, I'm like, oh, this sounds like I'm just, this is another excuse. Because this is the third time I've given him a reason that I can't do something. But really, that's not, not fair to him. So I had to tell him really what was going on. I said, well, I'm, I don't know if I'm ready for that, but I'm ready for dinner. Let's not jump out of a plane, but let's have dinner first. To me, that makes more sense. I want to see, yeah, your wrist level at dinner before we're jumping out of planes together or doing crazier things. Now, you're like, that just makes sense. I know. But the excuse is that I don't know that I'm ready to jump out of a plane with any of you. I don't. I've seen people. I've fixed people that have jumped out of planes and not done well. That's up here. If, we, if we're true, though, we know that excuses will limit things in our life. And that's the real problem, is that excuses will limit your faith, your health, your marriage, your relationships, and your future. It just happens. Because it sidelines you. If we look at Scripture, we see excuses all over the place. We can even start with Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. God said to Adam, he said, did, did you eat from that tree? You know that one, one thing I told you not to do. Did you eat from that? What did he say? <laughs> it was her. It was the wife. A lot of guys that I've been, I've been in guys groups for a long time, and a lot of the guys are like, yeah, if it wasn't for the woman, come on. That's an excuse, guys. We know it's an excuse. But then the Lord, then the Lord asked Eve, he asked the woman, he said, what have you done? What did she say? Well, it was, it was the serpent. It was the serpent. We go on in scripture. We see other people that are called. We see Sarah, who's called, and, and she's called to have a child in her old age. And what does she do? She's like, I'm too old. She just laughs. And then she says she didn't laugh. That's a really interesting portion of scripture to read if you want to spend some time in there. I think it's Genesis 13. But then we go on and there's this guy named Gideon in the book of Judges. And Gideon was called to, to deliver the Jewish nation. And when he was called, you know what he said? He goes, oh, you got the wrong people. You, you really have the wrong people, not even just me. My people are useless. They're very weak. This is the wrong job for us. And not only did you find the wrong people, in all of those people, I, I'm the worst choice. That's what he said. So his excuses, they're not new. We pick them up. Now, your excuses may not be like theirs, but they may be. But we pick them up in life. And we carry them, and we carry them on, and we keep using them, and they bec become part of who we are. Maybe some of yours sound like this. Well, you already told me this one. I'm too busy. I've thought that I'm too busy. And then I think that I have the same amount of time that everybody that's ever lived. And then all of a sudden, I'm not too busy. I just have poor, poor time management, which is true or my priorities aren't correct. I'm too tired. I'm a jerk. I'm an addict. I'm not good enough. I need my whatever it is. Because a lot of us won't do something until we get whatever it is. I can't get going in the morning before I get my Diet Coke. That's not me. But I know that's a thing. 
I'll do it later. Anyone really good at procrastinating? I'll do that later. One more time won't hurt. Just, I'm going to do it one more time. And then that's the last time I'm ever going to do that behavior that is not God-pleasing, not wife-pleasing, not relationship-pleasing. One more time. That's an excuse. And we laugh, we, we, we cringe sometimes when I say these out loud, but what they do is they hold you back. And they hold me back at becoming the person that God has called you to be. And if I take God out of that equation, because if you don't know, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you're like, what's that God thing? Even if I take God out of that equation, excuses are still ruling your life. Do you want them to do that? Because when it comes to personal growth, there are two questions that we have to ask ourselves. First one is, what does God want to be different about my life or your life? And then the second question is this, why does God want this part of your life to be different? What is in it? And when you put the what and the why together, there's power. Because at the root of everything, an excuse is blaming something internal on external factors. It's blaming something inside of you. You make your own excuses. You are hiding, you are hurt, you are something, and that's why an excuse comes out. I'm too busy to go out with you. Might sound like this if I was truthful. I'm just uncomfortable jumping out of an airplane with you. <laughs> Is that true? That's the truth. Am I too busy? I could make time. I could make time. 20 years from now, I'll put it on my calendar. I'm too busy to go out with you because I have social anxiety. The real truth is I have social anxiety and I'm uncomfortable going out with you. I'm too busy, I'm too tired. I really just want to finish that Netflix show because they, you know, they released a new episode. Excuses hide our fears and our insecurities, and they do such a nice job at that. But like I said, they limit your life, they limit your calling. Have you ever noticed as you've walked with Jesus that as soon as you decide to be different and to change, all of a sudden, Satan gives you an excuse to stay the same. Coach started the service with the challenge for us to love God and to love people and to do one thing different, to change one thing, to maybe say hi to someone. And some of you automatically in your head say, no, I don't want to say hi to someone. What if they, they won't like me? Yeah, if you haven't noticed, we love everybody around here. So I'll just cut that excuse out. So maybe, maybe you need to raise your hand. What? I'll look weird if I raise my hand. If I'm not in the front row, that's not true. That's not true. Sometimes we say things like, I'm going to start going to church on a weekly basis. I really want to get plugged in. And then have you found how many things want to pull on your calendar on a Sunday or a Wednesday? I want to tell you something. You're very special people, but you're not that special. It happens to all of us. It happens to me. There's times where I'm like, Pastor Josh, you want to take it today? I feel that sometimes. Becca, you ever feel that? Yes. She does. I walked into church today and someone said, boy, I get up at work every day at 6 o'clock, but you know, getting here at 9 o'clock is work. <laughs> I had a lot of reasons why I, I, didn't, I, I could sleep in longer. It's real. The problem with excuses is they become your boss. They become your leader. They become your director. They become your board of director. And your life is dictated by the silly excuses that you live by. It's true. Excuses have this exclusion nature. They keep you out of the game. 
There's nothing worse for me than sitting on the sidelines of a game. I can't stand it. It's not, it's not where I do well. But excuses will pull me out of a game. They keep me sidelined. It's not my thing. Should sound like maybe like I'm afraid. If I'm being truthful. But sometimes we just use these words and we get them all all mixed up because we don't know how to be honest with people. Excuses stem from these internal fears or external or internal um, excuse me, insecurities that we have, and we've had them for a long time, and sometimes we don't even know that we've had them. And Pastor Josh called out perfectionism last week and did a really nice job saying that we're looking at progression over perfection. And for the three of us that actually raised our hands that we were perfectionists, he spoke to directly to us. And the rest of you are liars, or some of you are liars, <laughs> or you had an excuse why you couldn't raise your hand. But, but he said these four things. He said that the reason that we go to, we say we want to be perfectionists because we like things a certain way. But he said, no, you're, you're afraid of failure. He said, you have a desire for approval. He said, your, your upbringing or your past experiences had an impact on your life. Or maybe you have control issues. So can you see that the excuse is perfectionism, but the real thing is those things that we might be carrying around inside of us. Excuses are so good at avoiding and dodging things, aren't they? They, they pull us back from actually taking a risk. Have you ever thought of doing something, maybe like jumping out of an airplane or praying for someone, which for you is the same thing, some of you. I know that. But have you ever thought about doing something and then the fear, the insecurity, the past kind of creeps in and you're like, oh, I can't do that. Because of something that someone told you, called you, labeled you, or expected of you. That's where the excuses start. I had a friend I was talking to in the last week. And we were talking about like weight management, weight loss. And I said, I don't know that that's what you need to do from a health perspective. And she goes, well... 20 years ago, I was with this guy, and he said, if I lost 10 more pounds, I'd be perfect. I said, oh, I'm sorry. But I said, I'd put money on the fact that he gained 10 pounds. <laughs> yeah, it's funny if you think about it, because it's true. But it wasn't fair, because she's carried that with her for such a long time, and she's had excuse after excuse of why she's not meeting the standard that some guy said to her. That hurt me. It's possible, maybe even probable, perhaps you have invented reasons to defend your behaviors or your feelings, and we call those things excuses. I had this thought a while ago. It was in June, I think. I thought, you know what? I want to do a, a race. I want to push myself a little bit. Something I don't do a lot of organized things, uh, sports-wise. And then as soon as I had that thought, you know the next thought I had? You're too old. Now, truthfully, I was one of the older people that did, I did do it, but I was one of the older people that did it. But that was the first thing. I train people for a living, truthfully. That's one of my jobs. I know how to train people. I know the shape that I'm in because there's metrics all over in the world and I can keep track of that. But still that excuse crept in that I was too old. But it didn't stop there. Because yeah, you're like, yeah, everybody says they're too old. Right, George? But then the excuse factory starts going. You know when it starts going? It's like a machine. I'm not fast. I'm really not fast. I used to be faster. 
What if I, Jack, what if I embarrass myself? I know, right? He's like, no big deal. Other people are going to be younger and stronger than I am. What if I get hurt? People get hurt doing these things. I've got, I, I don't know if I can preach on one leg. That's what I was like. I even had crutches in my head, right? Like, could I do that? I'd have to be here. That wouldn't work for me. It worked for a camera person. So all of these things are going through my head. But I let the, these thoughts start to, to build this paper wall up, this barrier of why I wouldn't do it. And then I signed up, and then I paid for it, and then I'm like, oh, I got to go. And then, listen, this is even better. This is how life is. So I take those days, and I've got them set up. I'm like, Sarah, we've got to go. It's an overnight thing. And then I get this time off request for somebody that works for me. I'm like, oh, my goodness, I have to work. I can't do it, I guess. No, I can work and then do it. That'll be really smart. It gets better. So the race, I, you had to carry a certain amount of weight. I weighed, they weigh your weights before you race. I weighed my weights. I think it was the scale, which is actually too light, but don't tell Sarah that. It weighed my weights 0.6 pounds lighter than I needed to qualify. Oh, no. I know. <laughs> so I'm like, it's killing me here. So what I did, I'm talking right to you now because you get it, <laughs> what I did is I added another three pounds. So I know. So then I, okay, so then we get there and I'm in a bad mood and I'm nervous the whole time and, and Sarah's like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay, my foot hurts, everything hurts. I don't know if I want to be here. I have talked myself out of this for four months. She's like, this should be fun. I'm like, it's going to be fun. You better believe it. I'm putting myself through torture here. This is all true. We go and we look at where we're, we're supposed to, or I'm, where the, the starting point is, and there's people that are working out like soldiers. I'm not kidding. This is the group that I'm, I'm supposed to be racing. They're like lifting heavy tanks over their heads, and, and they've got flags and stuff. And Sarah's like, what the heck is going on? I'm like, those are my people. Yeah. So we went home. We watched a romantic comedy, which was so stupid. And I was so irritated. Like, I wanted to watch Rocky. She's watching this rom-com. It was bad. It was bad. It was so bad. I usually cry. I didn't even cry during this thing. So bad. Anyway, so I get there in the morning. I'm like, first one there. We're drive, you know, driving around the parking lot because I see who wants to do the competition, right? I want more excuses. So bad. So there's all these people standing here, and I'm, I'm one of them. And they don't talk, and I'm, I, like when I'm nervous, I'll talk. I'll, I'll tell jokes, right? That's what I do. And I'm looking at them, and I'm like, I'm dead. <laughs> there is so much. This is male and female. There was a lot of testosterone in that circle on both sides. <laughs> there was a lot. It was so bad. I, want, I don't want to belabor this, but I'm to, you need to know how bad this was. <laughs> so they give you, you can do teams. Of course, I didn't do a team. I'm a solo guy. I'm an independent man. No team for me. They give us directions. So you have to find waypoints. You have to go, take a picture, you have to, and you have to map it on your phone. I didn't even have the app. Oh, yes, it, it's, it's so much better. I don't have the app. You know what else I don't have? These. And who can't see their phone? Not real well. And I surely can't put in 50 addresses while I'm trying to run. Anyway, I did it was what you really need to know. But excuses could have kept, you can see how the excuses just keep coming. They're not going to stop. They didn't stop that whole time at all. They're not going to stop for you either. They're not going to stop. What they do is they pull our focus from Jesus, though. They pull our focus from the calling. You can see how I told you, they, they, those excuses, they just pulled my, 
all of my, my intention from actually doing the thing that I was there to do. And it built these walls of why I shouldn't be there. In the book of Hebrews, we have this, this scripture, and it's Hebrews chapter 12. And Hebrews was written to Jewish believers, and they had been going through some stuff, and, and they had some excuses. And in chapter 11, one of, the, one of the best chapters of the Bible, talks about how these people of faith made it through. And it, it goes into detail. Even the New Testament, it's just, it's just powerful. But we read in chapter 12, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Have you noticed that excuses hinder you? They do. They entangle you. They keep you wrapped up. And he goes on, the author goes on, he says, and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run this race, because he's talking about this athletic analogy, but let us run this race with perseverance. But sometimes we let those excuses just wrap us up. And those excuses, like just like the excuses that I had for that race, and I have all, all kinds, but, but for that race, a lot of those were lies that I told myself. He goes, he says sin. Jesus was pretty clear about sin. He didn't list out every sin. He said, if you do something that hurts your brother or your sister and it hurts you, that's what sin is. An excuse is a lie that you tell yourself. That hurts you. That's a sin. So we need to look at it in that context. So this takes, it takes our attention from things that really matter, though, those excuses do. Have you ever gotten tangled up or wrapped up in excuses? I have. One of the classics is, have you ever told someone you're too busy and you see them at the ice cream store? <laughs> I've not done that. I mean, you could see me at the ice cream store, but I haven't. But that happens to people. When you tell an excuse, which is a lot of times a lie, and then you end up having to say something else, and then you're like, eh, 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 freed up or whatever you do, right? <laughs> what you probably should do. I'm sorry. I didn't tell you the truth. I just didn't want ice cream that day. That's another lie, too. So you got to figure that out. <laughs> However you want to do that, but you shouldn't tell another excuse. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Excuses compete with our faith, though. They do. Our ability to follow Jesus is directly related to our willingness to push through excuses. You need to push through your excuses. Because excuses prevent us from running the race, from you fulfilling your calling that God has set before you. I've, I've done funerals for people who live by excuses and are sidelined. Those are terrible funerals. You know why? No one says anything. No one shows up. And I've done funerals for people who run into their calling and face these excuses head on. And you know what those look like? Those are a celebration of life. It goes on and it says, fix your eyes on Jesus. So often we fix our eyes on the excuses. That's not, that's not right, guys. We are called to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Think about it. Excuses really aren't harmless statements. We think that they are. They're actually spiritual roadblocks. When we say, I can't, I'm not ready, I'll do it later, we put a, a distance, we put something between the life 
where we are in the life that God wants us to be. But Hebrews 12, tells, 12 too says, fix our eyes on Jesus, the one who endured the cross, overcoming every obstacle with joy. So we are called to live a life truthfully without excuses. We have to stop telling ourselves lies about ourselves and believing those lies. The ones that convince us that we're not good enough, we're not strong enough, we're not ready. You've already been equipped for the race. You just might need to deal with some of this internal stuff. Imagine the freedom that comes from letting go of your excuses. Imagine that. Because when you do that, you are actually transformed, but you also make the world around you a better place. Now, you have to answer those two questions, what and why. And you have to look at the thing before the thing, because the excuse is just an after thing. But you've got stuff in the basement. I know you do. So you may have to look at that, and you might have to deal with that. But my challenge for you this morning is this. Before you walk out of here, take some time and think, what is the excuse that I need to leave behind today? What is the one thing, the two things that I use way too often because I don't want to face my fear, my insecurity, my pain? That's your challenge, church.